All right, ready to go. I was wondering if I would show a streaming in the Roguelikes Discord, but seemingly not. I wonder if that's something I have to ask them to set up, or... No, oh, hold on, my status on Discord doesn't show a streaming yet either, so... Yeah. Computers are fake, we made them up. I was a professional IT guy and probably will be again before I'm dead. So I can confirm from first-hand experience the computers are fake. They've been lying to you the entire time. Wake up! Then. The artwork on this upload is really friggin' neat too, by the way. Just the, uh, the like Sissel and Lin, just yin and yang design that they have on there. That is, as some corners of the internet would call it, design porn. That is good art. All right. Anyway, <laughs> Soup Chat says, as game dev, I can confirm computers aren't real, but they can hurt you. Yeah, it's Discord's not showing me a streaming. You know what? I don't care. It doesn't really matter. It was just something I was curious about. I've been hanging around in the in the Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup uh, Discord. The hmm. right, so it's the roguelike server, and then the the Stone Soup channel. And some people there are actually pretty excited to see me because of those comics I drew so many years ago. So that's pretty neat. And I was just wondering if it would show me as streaming, even though I do not stream roguelikes. I'm not sure if I'm a good enough streamer to make roguelike streams interesting. Uh, here we go, the final episode of Ghost Trick. Which has been a just plain outstanding game, and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be sad to have it behind me. Still so many questions. I'm not even going to attempt a recap for you today. Let me see what Techman said. Last time on Ghost Trick, everyone got trapped on board a sinking sub, and Lid drowned, and then almost drowned, and then the spooky claw happened. Yep, there you go. I think you are in there, yeah. I think Ray's in there. A good handful of people are in this massive roguelikes Discord server. I mean, uh, let's see. Four users streaming, which is still not counting me. 3,209 online right now, so yeah, it's a popular one. Anyway, Ghost Trick. Five ten a.m. Everybody's been having a long ass night. So what the fuck with the claw? The upended submarine continues to sink slowly but surely. A long, long journey to the bottom of the sea. Lin and the little lady found the darkness and the salt water closing in on them. But at the very last second, something saved them. Now it looks down at them quietly. My head is filled with one giant question, what in the world is this thing? That was indeed my question, except I think I worded it something like, <laughs> It's... 
A junk claw? What the f- f oh, okay. What? Hello, new best friend. Oh god. Not best friend at all. Oh no, not friend. <laughs> See, you managed to survive, detective. Yeah, you're- Excuse my appearance, I seem to have lost my body. Holy shit, I love this game. Oh, and you there. You are the ghost who's been saving Lin all evening, aren't you? You knew about me all along? Of course, what else would explain all these unnatural things happening? If you knew, how come you didn't do anything about it all this time? And how come you decided to save us all of a sudden? I thought you wanted to get revenge on us. I don't really know. Please, you gotta tell me. I need to know. <laughs> no, just the nondescript ghost with the cool shades. Hi, Ollie. I'm glad you're here. Who in the world are you? Sissel, look at you. What happened? I can't hold on to that image of myself any longer. You can't remember who you are? That's right. I came all this way tonight trying to chase down my lost memory. For quite a bit of tonight, I thought I was you, Sissel. Sissel? My name isn't Sissel. And I bet you'll remember really soon. Who you are, and who I am too. What? Fucking incredible. <laughs> I fucking love Junk Sissel. Amazing. The man in front of me is not me. I'm even further away from the truth. Maybe not. Something is stirring in my mind, a memory about to emerge. Do I know this man? Now that I've shed my image of myself, I feel like I'm one step closer to the truth. That is absolutely the form I would take if I were a ghost. It is perfect. They got us good. It's all over for the submarine. Its engine room is destroyed. There's a hole in the hole, and it's sinking as we speak. What are you doing here? I thought you had to deal with those people. They betrayed me. I was a fool to trust them. They already have what they wanted now. Tempsic fragment. I didn't know they had it all figured out. You mean they figured out the source of your powers? Yeah. That meteorite's radiation has two effects on living creatures. It gives power and time. If you don't mind, we'd like to hear more. These ten years... I've been watching that junkyard superintendent do his research. And I think I've got some of it figured out. Kind of got some of it figured out. Was that, uh... <laughs> is Missile here with us? The meteorite's radiation gives spirits special powers. Like possessing and manipulating objects. And in my case, swapping objects! I'm the dog! Exactly. Apparently there are individual differences in the powers we get. And it seems these powers change as time goes by. They do? Yeah, my powers have changed over these last ten years. At first, I could only manipulate small, living creatures. Now then, how do you suppose we got these powers? It's simple. It is? How then? In a nutshell. We died while exposed to the energy emitted by the meteorite, its radiation. That's what does it? Dying while being exposed to the radiation? On that day ten years ago. Fucking hell. A fragment of that meteorite pierced my heart, and I died. And he got blue powers. So, of course, I received special powers. Hey, wait a minute. Is that how I got my powers, too? You yeah, know, you might be right. It's like I said, he fell into the dog crater. Well, I guess it wasn't a dog crater until he landed in it. Before that, it was just a you know, your average, you know, run-of-the-mill backyard meteorite crater. 
Aren't the Temsic frag Temsic remnants still right there in the park at the bottom of that crater? You're right. So that must mean I must have died in the presence of the meteorite's radiation too. I still don't know. Like I can't even really formulate a good guess at what the twist at the end is. Like who is me? Who is me? Another effect the radia the meteorite's radiation has on us is that it gives us time. Again, I think this time effect is centered around the theme of death, but it's not all that clear. So the fact that I can return to four minutes before a person's death is another effect of that meteorite? One of the characteristics of that meteorite is the ability to replay the moment of death. Replay the moment of death? Ah, this is also strange and confusing. I can't take it all in. It makes about as much sense to me as anything else. <laughs> yeah, strange and confusing. That just about sums up the object that pierced my body that day. Thanks to that meteorite fragment. My very existence is a contradiction. What do you mean? That day... When that fragment pierced my heart, I lost my life. However... <laughs> Polly's not kidding. Everything about this game is you. A red and black guy with the shades and now he's a robot. Fucking... Yeah. God damn. <laughs> I, I have to swear about how good this game is. It's the only way I can express it. Okay, because it remained inside of me, that fragment continued to constantly regenerate my body. In other words, my body was continuously cycling between the moments that separated my life and death. Yikes! Yeah, that would explain it. If it, like, if the meteorite intrinsically has time travel powers, he was, like, stuck at the moment of death for ten years. Wild. My body's vital function stopped ten years ago. But my body's time has perpetually stopped at the moment just before death. Time just stopped, huh? So I just simply existed, not really alive and not really dead. That pretty much sums up these last ten years for me ever since that incident in the park. My body hasn't aged a day, my hair hasn't grown an inch. Come to think of it, that old pigeon guy mentioned something. He said he couldn't cut this guy's body with the scalpel. So I guess as soon as his decision was made, his body would be regenerated. Just rewound in time to what wasn't there. Wild. Before I left this country, I wanted to do one thing. I wanted to get the revenge. I wanted to get all of that revenge on the people who stole our lives. Our lives? As part of the deal, I made those guys promise to cooperate. Cooperate? You mean the kidnapping? It all went fine. I manipulated the justice minister and made him issue the execution order. But I thought he might call off the execution at the last second. So that's why he wanted his daughter kidnapped. But they kidnapped the wrong girl. Little did I know, they had their own reasons for cooperating with me. Huh? Their objective was to wipe out everybody who had to do with Temzik. Fucking love that guy. <laughs> Detective Jowd was one such person, so they were happy to cooperate. Inspector Cabanella and that junkyard super, they were slated to be wiped out too. And as it turns out, <laughs> I mean really though, the red suit with the black shirt and the white tie, it's a good friggin' look. I was one of their targets as well. So they stole my Temsic fragment, and here I am. But they have one more final target. Yeah. You, detective. Me. If you weren't there in the park that day ten years ago, I never would have thought of doing something as stupid as taking a hostage. Okay. 
I was just a little kid playing in the park. Yeah, I know. Huh? Ten years later and you'd become a detective looking into Jowd's case. Tonight I invited you to a quiet spot on the edge of town. It was a trap, you see. I told you who I was. You never saw my face that day ten years ago. So of course you didn't recognize me. Babble boopy? Oh, yep. I took possession of you to make you shoot me. Your subconscious resisted me. Such incredible power. It was the first time I wasn't able to control somebody completely. And that's why it took more than one shot. The aim was off and the first shot missed the mark. Arg! I am undone. The junkyard was equipped with security cameras. I knew you'd be wanted for murder. That was my plan, anyway. Yeah, but she didn't remember having done it, even. Almost forgot about that, dude. It was a lot of game ago. But they had other ideas. They simply wanted you wiped out. But then... Something threw a big monkey wrench into their scheme. Pretty fucking slick move from Lynn there, really. The second she had an opportunity, boom, she was gone. I showed up. I was supposed to meet up with him after that. But then something went wrong. What happened? My body disappeared. Aha, Inspector in White was responsible for that one. My precious bargaining chip was in that body. I had to get it back, no matter what. That inspector caused me no end of trouble. But why were those people targeting me? I never even heard of the Temsic meteorite. Because you were looking into the Jout case. They thought you would find out about Temsic sooner or later. Yeah, this is not a great place to be right now. And that's pretty much the whole story. Only thing left to do now is wait for the water pressure to crush the submarine. Oh no! There are no cores that link from here to the water surface. I have an idea, we hook up the phone line and... There are no communication cables down this deep. They meant for the submarine to be my coffin. A coffin for the dead. There's no escape. So like the whole reason they were based in a submarine was because they'd planned to head for this? It, it kind of makes sense, actually. It's fucked, but it makes sense. I'm only putting together- I'm like looking at the background this whole time, and I'm putting together that the whole submarine is still like wrong ways, rotated, yeah. Kind of think I understand now. What you've been feeling these ten years. You what? This feeling. Cut off from the world all alone in a submarine. Sinking slowly toward the bottom of an endless sea. This must be how you felt all along. Then, uh, and Camilla, is it true we're stuck here? What? Oh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> My dad. My dad was here. I bet he'd save us. Yeah, probably. Oh, Camilla, I'm so sorry! Hmm, that's funny. 
What is it, Sissel? Something I don't understand. So where did the name Sissel even come from, if that's not him? Hmm. There's something I don't understand. Why would they go to all the trouble of detaching the control room? What? Why didn't they just steal the Temzik fragment and escape if that's what they wanted? Why did they have to jettison your body off into the sea? Hmm. That's a good question. I guess it doesn't matter why now. We'll never find it again. We have no idea where it was launched to. But Jad was also in that thing. Yes, we do! Haha! -ha. This will tell us where Detective Jout is. When did you get that? That present from the Inspector in White. That's right, Detective Jout told me how to hold on to it for him. And the bullet is still in the person's body in the command room, right? Then we should be able to tell exactly where it is with this. But even if we did find out where it is, how do we get there? We should be able to figure something out between the three of us. With our powers, right, Miss Lynn? Right. Oh, and wait a minute, what about a torpedo? A torpedo? In any case, it's way too early to give up. Hmm. Looks like Detective John is our last hope. Come on, let's get started. So Bad Sissel is now kind of on our side, too. Okay, what do we do now? We go find the command room that was launched somewhere into the sea. What? How? Just to let you know, I don't like water very much. According to Lynn, the key to our planet is a torpedo, a kind of missile. Missile? You have a missile right here! I don't think she's talking about that kind of a missile. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna make that joke. Anyway, now then. Where did we see another miss- I mean, torpedo? Presumably not far from the prior one. All he says, a good sizzle is a dog. I'm going to die from zero related coincidences. <laughs> That's the best sentence of this week, I think. I like that. I, I want that sentence framed. If good sizzle is a dog, I'm going to die from zero related coincidences. <laughs> so his shell is definitely there in the command room, right? Just without the fragment? It's there, yeah, but I don't know about calling it a shell. I mean, without the meteorite fragment in it, it's really just a corpse. A ten year old corpse. Detective Jout's watch will tell us exactly where it is. Right. He said it was a radio receiver, didn't he? There might still be another torpedo on the submarine. If we use it, we can get to Detective Jout. That's a brilliant plan, Detective. You think so? <laughs> so, what are you gonna do? Right on top of the torpedo? Of course not. You guys are gonna go. Darn. Kinda wanted to see that. <laughs> Did you want to see me drown? How you doing, Camilla? So my dad isn't here on the submarine? Don't worry, we're gonna go get him right now. Okay. I hope I didn't hurt Lynn's feelings when I said about dad saving us if he was here. Oh, don't worry about that. Comments like that just roll right off Miss Lynn's back. She's really thick-skinned. Ouch. I'm going to start being tougher, too. I want to make my dad proud of me. Miss Camilla. I'm sure your dad is very proud of you, Camilla. Okay. I'd better not open this. That water could come gushing. Oh, right. We're right on top of, like, the whole drowned part of the submarine. It's such a peaceful mood at the moment. No need to throw cold water on it. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to call it peaceful. <laughs> no room in this submarine is without grapes. Why is this machine shoving grapes at me? Well, this looks like the private cabin on the top of the top officer, doesn't it? The machine's probably for feeding him grapes while he lies in bed. Oh, it sounds heavenly. I've been thinking about this for a while now. Don't you think that country's use of technology is just a little off? Says the guy who made a deal with said country. Anyway. Looks like the arm of this machine is a bit busted. Well, I mean, want some grapes? Noodle. There we go. Mm. 
Go! Safe. <laughs> Go to Torpedo Room. The best room in any video game. The Torpedo Room, huh? There might be another torpedo left there. I'll go check it out. Give me a sec. Yeah, you know what? Discord is not showing me as streaming. I might have to relink my Twitch and Discord accounts again. That happened once before. Memo to self. Do that. There might be another torpedo left there. I'll go check it out. <laughs> Thank you for that, Ollie. <laughs> No, I get it. You're going to use a missile to ram the control room. Well, I don't know about ram. I don't want to blow a detector shout up, but something like that. We'll climb up to the torpedo room, too. Up is definitely safer. Okay, I'll see you there, then. Looks like the torpedoes can be manually launched with these switches. There are two tubes, so there should be one more left. I guess the first thing we have to do is load it into the tube. When it comes to missiles, you can count on me! I'll enter the coordinates of the command room in the torpedo. Well, you get some really specific intel from that watch, huh? Now, just turned on the backup power. We ought to be able to use the switches now. Okay, let's try it. Good luck! Oh, dog is there. I'm not dog right now, I'm only sizzle. Alright. Switch won't budge, maybe it's broken? Don't think the entire device is broken, though. Probably would work just fine if I only I could move this switch. We'll just have to find a way to move it somehow. Can't do it with my powers alone. Squeaky? That ought to take care of it. Hey, uh, Doggurst, what you up to, man? What happened to these two ladies? I think that's up to us, and our powers. Nani? This is no time to be standing around unsure of ourselves. Will you lend me your strength, missile? <laughs> will, will you give me, lend me your dog powers? Count on it! Alright, so my guess is... Just... Trade the switches? Yeah. Damn it. There we go. Let the record show that Soup said it this time, not me. There we go. That torpedo looks serviceable. All set on this end, too. Something's odd. What is? the command room. It looks like it's slowly sinking. Sinking? Yeah, like it's completely run out of power. I wonder what happened. I don't know, but I guess I'll find out. Okay. Well, hop out of the missile. <laughs> Soup says, this isn't Phoenix right. You can't trial me. It's not Phoenix right yet. Well, you know what? I guess even then it won't, still won't be Phoenix right. I'm probably not going to jump straight into uh, Edgeworth game right after this. Uh, I might take a break from it because I also have uh, the Ace Attorney Chronicles in my Steam library, courtesy of TechPain. So uh, I'm going to crack into those and once I'm done with Ghost Trick, I think I try not to double dip on these games. But anyway. <laughs> Friends, Ghost Countrymen, lend me your noodles. <laughs> I'll launch it for you. Okay, thanks. Just another run-of-the-mill get-launched-from-a-torpedo scenario here. I've already set the torpedo's course. It'll head towards the command room where Detective Jout is. Twelve seconds after launching, it'll pass by the command room for an instant. That instant will be your window of opportunity to jump over to the command room. Okay, got it. Then we'll find a way to come back and save you. That'll probably be my last task tonight. Just hold on until we get back. An implication that I'm not sure if any other character picked up on. Remember when he's supposed to stop existing at daybreak. When he says my last task tonight, he means ever. Okay, come on, missile. 
Missile? I... I'm sorry, I can't go. What? I just can't, how could I leave? I can't leave Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla behind. I can't do it! No, I can't do it! Missile. I swapped the switches so the missile can be launched. You will have to do the rest, Cecil. He is a good boy. I can't do it either. I can't ask Missile to come with me after that. I understand exactly how it feels. These nice ladies should have a ghost dog in their company. <laughs> Dolly goes, man, missile, this was your destiny. It always was. Help fire a missile. It's true. I want you to go, missile. What? But Miss Lynn, you staying here won't change our fate. But if you go with Sissel, you might be able to make something happen, and that's our only hope. But oh, what if that something doesn't happen? I'll never be able to see you again. Never, never again. Even I can understand that. I, I couldn't stand that. Don't worry, Missile. Miss Camilla? I just know you and Sissy can make something happen. I believe in you. I'll be right here waiting for you. Then we'll see, we'll see each other then. Don't worry. Gets to have faith, Missile. Miss Camilla! Dog Missile. Missile Missile. <laughs> That's a good boy, Missile. Now the missile is missile. Incredible. Now are you ready? Remember, it's 12 seconds after I throw the switch. We're ready. Sissel? Yeah? We never found out who you really were. But that doesn't matter now. All I know is I'm truly glad I met you tonight. Thank you for everything. I'm glad I met you, Detective. But we're going to see each other again, right, Sissy? Right, Missile? That's right. You promised, little lady. Of course we will, dog. I'll never forget you, no matter what happens. Here goes, then. Good luck, friend. It's the music again. <laughs> what a good freaking game, goddamn. These 12 seconds are lasting an eternity. I strive to think of a way to save Lynn and the little lady the whole time. Someone says, how many rats does this missile contain? Just all of them. It's just, like, sardine can packed with rats. But how can a ray of light and of hope reach this far down into the deep sea? Before I can think of an answer, the 12 seconds are up. Obviously, I need Missile here for such an intensive timing puzzle. There we go. Oh, no. Detective Jowd! I bet that big mask man did this! I'm gonna bite him! You better not, you might break your teeth. Command room has lost power and is sinking, so I wonder what this masked man is going to do. Let's talk to Detective Jout. Ah, oh, I see. I can't even reach the dead guy. Let's see what he did there. <laughs> like, no, I want to talk. Ah, fine, I'll talk to Jout. Sorry for the wait, Detective Jout. Who are you? Are you Sizzle? Please excuse my appearance. Can't believe you made it here. How is Camilla? What about Lynn? Well, it's kind of a long story. I told Detective Jout about everything that happened on the submarine, you know. So the submarine's badly damaged? Why would he do that to his own submarine? I wish I knew. I know the answer to that one. It's because he's afraid of my powers. <laughs> Who's here? Uh-huh. His actual core as a dead guy is now here. Got it. You. You followed us? I didn't even notice. It's been ten long years, Detective Job. Are you... Yomio? Yomio. Yo 
so you remember me, do you? How could I possibly forget? So that's your real name, huh, Yomio? That's right. Those people on the Yomo on the Yonoa were calling you Sizzle. That's just an alias I was using for my deal with them. I didn't see any need to tell them my real name. Could you do me a favor? Would you let me ask you some questions? I've been trying to find out my true identity all night. Sure, go ahead. Sure, there's plenty we can still tell you, right, Detective Job? Right. Ten years ago, you were a top systems engineer, weren't you? Systems engineer, what's that? By the way, I'm a top Pomeranian, you know. Well, it's kind of hard to explain to a dog, but it's a person who's good at using computers. I don't mean to brag, but I was one of the best in the industry. That's how I got roped into joining that project. Project? What project? It's a project aimed at reorganizing the nation's top secret information. The goal was to build a new system using multi-dimensional programming theory. I was asked to join the project by an agent of the government. Wow. Doesn't sound like something a top Pomeranian would know anything about. To me, it just sounded like another challenging job. However, this project was also the target of a secret plot. Bet you can imagine the kind of crime the nation's top secrets might attract. Never thought for the life of me I'd ever have to deal with spies. It was never made public, but every organization in the country moved in on this one. And then one day, the name of a certain programmer emerged as a suspect. I was the guy who built the core of the system. Police arrested you, and then that incident happened. He escaped from the interrogation room and took Lin, little Lin as a hostage. By the way, Detective Job, when was it that I was proven innocent? About six months after your death. I'm so sorry, Yomiel. Ten years ago. world's least likely meteorite. Well, the world? Well, yeah, definitely the world. Hang on a sec. <clears throat> my soul was split from my body and I lost everything. I was sealed in eternal darkness. I existed in this world, no question about that. But nobody noticed my presence. What good were my powers? They didn't help anybody. Not even the passage of time could heal my pain. Because time wasn't passing for him. In fact, it only made it worse. I wanted to disappear, but I wasn't even allowed to do that. The way Lin described it is exactly right. Sinking slowly toward the bottom of an endless sea. An overwhelming feeling of loneliness and despair. And I wanted all of you to suffer what I was suffering. So that's why you murdered Alma. That's right. I wanted you to know what it was like to lose everything you cared about. I wanted you to feel the same pain I felt. What? It was the twisted wish of a mind poisoned by infinite loneliness. And then, as I was plotting my revenge, I had an idea. I came up with a plan to use these powers of mine to make a deal. something I just don't understand about that deal. I'm sure your powers would be very valuable to them, but what would you get out of the deal? A new life. Life. I asked them for two conditions. Number one was that they help with my revenge plot. Second was a rebirth for me. Rebirth. New beginning, eh? 
I didn't care if it was a fake life, an artificial life. I just wanted a physical receptacle for my soul, a name, an identity, an everyday life. I wanted to grow old in a society that would accept me. Finally, I wanted to die, surrounded by a loving family. That's the kind of life I asked them for. Just a regular ass life. A completely man-made life. That's right. I knew I couldn't hope for anything more than that. To make it all come true, I knew it would take a lot of money and a lot of power. That's why I decided to ask a national government to help me. And their response, in the end, was betrayal. They were making their moves much more carefully than I suspected. They sent spies to this country and researched my powers on their own. And... They even figured out what Temzik was all about. You had no idea they were doing all this. None at all. I was a fool. So then... Why did they go to all the trouble of making a deal with you? Why didn't they just steal a hunk of Tem Temzik meter right from the park? They couldn't. Huh? After the manipulator incidents, research was conducted in this country, too. A report was submitted to the government about the source of the manipulator's power. By Inspector Cabanella and the old pigeon guy, huh? <laughs> I like pigeon guy is the best name for him. I mean, that's I'm pretty sure that's what I've called him. Maybe pigeon dude. At first, the government didn't believe the report. But then they decided to put the park under surveillance just in case. Surveillance, huh? It just looks like an ordinary peaceful park, but there are armed agents there at all times. <laughs> no way. Don't tell me that all Leafly guy's one of them. No, not him. He's just a plain old odd person. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> nah, he's just weird. <laughs> that park is like a silent battlefield on an international scale. So that's why they couldn't steal the Temzik meteorite. And lately, under the pretense of building a housing site, they've been working on a plan to destroy that park in order to secure the Temzik meteorite. So that's it, eh? So the upshot of your grand deal was this, eh? Yup, it's the ending I deserve. But at least there's one thing you must be happy about. What's that? You managed to seal me away at the bottom of the sea forever. Well, shall we get started? Started with what? Bringing Detective Job back to life, of course. What? What could that do us now? But we promised. We promised Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla we'd save them. We can't do that without you, Detective Job. Been guided by fate tonight to this place. I won't give up now. All right, fine. Let's see where it leads us. Here we go then, back to four minutes before your death. Cecil. So Cecil was just an alias, that's disappointing. So, where are we headed? We are not headed anywhere, Detective. What? There is only enough fuel on board to launch us away, Detective. We will run out soon, and that will be our destination, Detective. What are you talking about? That would mean that you're trapped here, too! What? Ah. <laughs> By the way, I'm not human, Detective. Yeah, that adds up. I am a remote-controlled robot, Detective. What? Your country's use of technology is just plain off. We get that a lot, Detective. Why would you go to all the trouble to do this? That's nothing but a shell there. It's hardly a threat anymore. Commander Sith likes to provide against any possibility, no matter how small, Detective. Possibility? What are you talking about? There is no need for you to know, Detective. 
Yeah, those are your new body Yomi. I'll just take that guy. Well, yeah, that's just not fucking around at all, is it? They really covered the bases pretty thoroughly. And then after the machine gun kills the guy inside the impenetrable, like, capsule that's sinking to the bottom of the ocean, it's going to explode, and then a meteorite will hit the remains. And then a big, like, undersea scar sarlacc will eat the with the explody bits. Now it's time to say goodbye, Detective. In the end, your fate remains the same, it seems, Detective. Camilla, forgive me. God damn. It isn't over yet. It isn't? Remember what that big masked man said? Any possibility, no matter how small. Possibility. In other words, there must be a chance here somewhere. The possibility of turning this situation around. Like a roundabout. Uh, a turnabout, I mean. Yeah. That's the word the other games use a lot. The roundabout is a traffic pattern. Where we headed? Down. Bad. I do not like... Secret robot. Hmm. Huh? What is it, detective? Look at Yomiel's shell. There's no aura emanating from his body. Of course there isn't. The tensor fragment is gone. But this change in his shell... Give us some kind of lead? Figured it out. I know with this possibility, no matter how small it is that they're afraid of. That is that they are afraid of. And, and... What is it? My time was perpetually stopped thanks to the power of Temzik. His body cycled between the moments that separated his life and death. Right, but not anymore. The Temzik fragment has been taken away. Exactly. So what does that mean? I get it. Your body won't come back to life anymore. The moment the Temzik fragment was removed, my shell became a regular corpse. That's what I said. So, let's see, that means... We can go back, back to four minutes before your death? Whoa. Why didn't I think of that? But, wait a minute. Exactly when is that death? Ten years ago, that's when that was. It's simple, we'll find out. When we get there, let's move! Yeah, now is when all the when the all caps is happening in chat. Motherfuck. No, yeah, ten years ago when that whole thing happened, we're going all the way back to the start of all of it. I felt back through the cracks of time for what seemed like forever, and then I saw it. The final death at the end of this long night. Who exactly am I? I've already seen all of the clues, now all I have to do is remember. The final journey to the truth starts now. God, what a good freaking video game! I'm like, all in. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited too. I really am. When was Yomiel's death? It was ten years ago when the Temzik meteorite fell. <laughs> All he says if I wanted to make a Homestuck Strider reference is I saw this damn shades. Yeah, that, that's up. <laughs> we traveled back through time and now we're here at the scene of that death. The, the start of it all is about to replay itself. How much are we going to undo with this, though? Like, what are the implications of changing something that happened that long ago? A little in. <laughs> Hold it! Ah, uh, there's the warning shot. A rather green Detective Joe throwing some weight around. Give it up. You really think you can outrun me? 
Yomiel's back is to the wall. He makes a rash move. Now just calm down and drop that weapon. Stay back! If you come any closer, I'll shoot her! Kitty. It's the kitty. Uh oh, uh, kitten. Sure, you might get hurt. Who's this kitty? What's the deal with this cat? There is a deal with this cat. Wow, that animation. Temzik all everywhere. And this one goes. Well, I just figured out how we can avert this. Yep. All of this happened, Detective Jowd, because you didn't pet the cat. You've let everyone down. You okay? No, I have problems. You're alright now, are you hurt? You saved me a little in. <laughs> Look at your little coat. I was just doing my job. The gods, they're the ones who saved you. What's your job, mister? Me, I'm a police detective. So that's the Temsic Meteor, right, eh? It's beautiful looking at it from this angle. Changed all of our fates completely. Can't stop Temsic from falling from the sky, but we might be able to protect you from that fragment and save your life. I don't know. What's the matter, Detective Jub? To be perfectly honest, I'm scared. That meteorite fragment doesn't get him. I'm pretty sure I would have shot him. Damn, I honestly really feel for Yomiel. Like he was, he was, he was innocent the whole time. And then, <laughs> just in his desperation. And then the meteorite, and then just 10 years of freaking post-meteorite purgatory. Fuck. We might not be able to change your fate of dying. I can accept that. What I did is inexcusable. No matter how the future might change, that fact will never go away. If my fate is to die here, then I accept that. This will be our last battle against fate. Beyond that will be a new future. Okay, let's get started. So wait, we're not saving you? <laughs> then what are we doing here? Now, how are we gonna save you? If Lynn would just wander off somewhere, that would solve everything. <laughs> when her sweet potato's almost ready? Ha! <laughs> She's not gonna budge from that spot. But you know what makes me wonder? A little girl all alone in the park listening to music and roasting a sweet potato. What kind of childhood did this girl have? Doesn't everybody have at least one day in their life like that? Give her a break. Anyway, if Lin won't budge from that spot, then we'll just have to have the fragment move instead. Yeah, it, got, it went through that lamppost. We need to swap the lamp with something. Swap the bulb with something hard. It will deflect the meteor. Botat, apparently. It wasn't subtle about breaking through that bulb, either. Here's the cat. What's going on with the cat? Okay, so hold on here. Headphones. <laughs> it's those headphones again. Can't reach over there. I mean, that would probably work, but I can't reach. What in the world is this thing? Oh boy, you even got what a sweet potato is? It's a roasted root vegetable, it's good. There's nothing like them on a cold winter's day. They're sweet and they smell delicious. It's kind of sure I'm making me want to try one. Mm. 
Mm. You kitty. Everybody stop and be nice to the cat. Pet the cat. Uh. Hmm. <clears throat> Dog noodle. Damn it. I don't know. Never been that big on sweet potatoes myself. Yeah, see, if anybody had paid attention to the Goodwill Cat, who came to be nice to everybody, things would have been different. What's that? What are you doing? You're gonna hurt poor Miss Lynn's ears! I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. You really startled her. You made her drop her sweet potato. I know how much this girl loves her food, too. Anyway, at least her fate has changed, albeit ever so slightly. Hmm. Alright, that gives me a path over here. Want the basket? Go, 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 potato faster. Oh, no. Uh, uh, the tet didn't have a core until it rolled all the way out of the... Oh, okay. But, wait. Hold on, something's happening. Look at that sweet potato. Yeah. Hold on. Sizzle doesn't need to get up there, though. Ah, uh, but he needs to turn on the fountain to, to spoosh. Damn, yep, I messed up. A big scary sweet potato. It's not a sweet potato missile, that's me, though. Oh, all right, of course. Yeah, I could dog to put tap, but I couldn't make this push without Sissel over there, and he can't reach. <laughs> make the sploosh, I say. <laughs> you gotta hit the poofies with the sports, you gotta make the sploosh on the potat. Look out of the potato, Amino. Right now, they have the same shape. Hmm. We might. Like, I thought maybe I had to spoosh the patat up that. Yeah. Well, obviously I fucked up. I'm just not sure how yet. So you're saying you can swap them. Okay, here I go, and I'm gonna need your help. My help. Yep, cannot reach the spoosh. And Mitt Dog cannot reach, like, anything. Well done. No, you can reach here. Yeah, I was close. I just needed to be in the potat. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna take a quick BRB to visit the restroom, and then uh, then I'm gonna have to slam dunk this shit. Better back.
Okay, here we go. Yep, that's right. 360 no scope. S sweet potato. Potato percent speed run. Here we go. Okay. Uh, uh, my crap. All right. All right, here we go. Uh, turn up the headphones. Spook the girl. Please don't do that. I just thought maybe you would wake her up. Even if you did wake her up, what good would the- Okay, we already did that. The potato is already okay. No, we could. Do not spook girl. Not needed. Rock the casbah. Rock the taskbar. Minor lesser sploosh B in potat. Here we go. Don't need to worry too much about dog positioning. You can just he's he's dog noodle has exemplary reach. Oh come on! Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I went too fast. Yeah, I thought the my, the lesser spoosh lasted longer. Yeah. I thought I could just turn it on and then float the potat across it. Weren't the case. I'll be with that. Yes, go. Yes, push. Yes. Great for spoosh. Where's Doug? Great for spoosh. But I don't think I want to... Do I want to do that? Maybe I do. Because ultimately I want to swap out that right lamppost, but like I can't, I have to, I'm going to have to do this for right now. Sploosh. That was quite a sight to see. Looks like the spark just got a new feature. Neither one of them even, even glanced this way. Guess that's not surprising, seeing as even a meter right didn't distract them. Hey, it was a desperate situation. Kill or be killed. Yomiel is killed right after this by the meteorite. Well, now that the park has a new feature, can we use it to our advantage in any way? I guess not, huh? That didn't change my situation. Hmm. Well, I'm on the right track. There's something else going on. Stupid heavy ass Mito. About time for that meteorite to come down. Uh oh, we have to change the fragment's path somehow. Hmm, looks like both paths and fates can be difficult things to change. There has to be a way. We work together, you and me, I thought we'd be able to do something. Ah, that's funny. I wonder why he's using the past tense. Why indeed? Let me let this time out and just see what happens. Hmm. All right, I'm a little stumped. I doubt we could move those two from that spot, which means we'll have to do something with the tech rat for a bit of smirtle, but your triple triple. That should be easy. I think you're right, Missile. This is gonna be the grand finale. Hmm. Ken says it's something pretty timing heavy. Sweet potato. What in the world is this thing? Uh, just the sweet potato conversation again. So I'm pretty sure that the only function that is accomplishing is giving me a bridge over to the basket. It's push. Potatoes, man, we made them up. Swamp potato and dig. Don't think I can do that. No, the the sweet potato it wasn't. It was shaped differently. 
The roasted one. Yeah, I mean, this is... This is the only potato-shaped potato still here. Hmm. Yeah, that's, all, that's only half potato shape now. So this is all according to plan. Right, right. There's a, some... There's some bit of nuance that I'm missing here. Just one last part of this. Couldn't beat them. Nah. Meteorite fragment is not potato shaped. Couldn't be. Um. Hmm. I gotta know if I want to do this yet. I mean. Ah. Well, I put a potato there. <laughs> Don't know if that helps us. Maybe the meteorite will have lunch on the way. Lunch. Ah, oh, that other bulb ate shit. Hmm. It's like this park just got a new feature. Hmm. Yep, I'm missing something. Like, I know what to do, I just don't know how to pull it off. Mm. Urgh, a delicious potato we death! Blah. It's like right there. I mean, it was just barely out of reach of where you want it from the upper and lower positions. So I need to grab it like while it's. Hmm. So this is just a really particular distance puzzle is what I'm picking up here. Go, 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 go. Quickly. Up. Oh. Dog. Ah. It was right there. Yep. I made that a little harder than it needed to be. Oh, look, the lamppost is bending. But it hasn't broken yet. Really is a wonder it hasn't snapped. Might just hold out for a little while longer. I recall the Temsic fragment smashed through the glass lantern on the way down. But if Mino sits firmly in its way, then fate should change. Yeah, that was exactly what I knew I needed to do from the start. I just... It's tricky to pull off. It's about time for that meteorite to come down. Don't worry, Missile, I think we're ready for it. Look what's right in the fragment's path. <laughs> don't say that, Ollie. Oh god, don't be right. Okay, that giant sweet potato. If anything can get in the way, that ugly monster can. Ouch. Anyway. Now the fragment's path ought to change. Launch. Launch. I don't know where potato went. Potato was gone. Alright, maybe I'll make a sploosh anyway, just for fun. Look at the goo. This is not what electronics are supposed to do. Mmm, dink. There, how's that? Look, the fragment's course, it changed a little. But to where? 
Now Yomiel's fate really should should really change a lot. Wait a minute. Take another look at the ob the fragment's trajectory. Now that it's changed, what's in its path? In its path. That was my thought too. Yep. Oh, right in the okay, only his leg. <laughs> okay. Came real close on that one, Detective. I'm, I'm glad that was just a... Alright. Detective Jout! Temzik fragment shot through his leg. What? The cruel twists of fate weren't over yet. Come on, put it down! Huh? Jout, put the gun down, now! If you don't, you're going to shoot him! I don't know if it's his detective training or what, but even though he's shaking for the pain, the gun doesn't waver. Put the gun down! Well, I knew it. This is my true fate. In the end, I sold his life away with my own hands. I won't let the potato... <laughs> Missile! The bullet stopped in midair. The best boy! I'm here inside the bullet! Now let's swap it with something. What? With what? This guy's gonna have a fucking ballistic lunch! The meteorite fragment's what made you pull the trigger. We won't let you become a murderer. We have to prove that murder isn't the detective's true fate. To do that, we have to stop this bullet. It must be something with the same shape as the bullet. Dog noodle. Oh no. Stop the bullet, but we still couldn't save him. Fuck! That's not true. My fate of getting pierced through the back might not have changed. Oh. But I'm still alive. What? I'm not dead, I'm just unconscious. Okay, so your fate of death has changed, but still... This fate is just too painful to watch in every sense. I don't think so. As long as I'm alive, that's good enough for me. But we were overlooking one thing. The Wheel of Fate was still slowly turning. Motherfuck! It's... <laughs> Wake up! You gotta get out of there! What is leg? Damn it, my leg won't work. It's all over, we're out of time! Miss Lynn! It's not over yet. But there isn't anything else to swap with! Why don't we just let it play out and then find another way next time? Even if she dies, all you have to do is possess her corpse, and then you can redo her as last, that last four minutes as many times as it takes. No, I won't do that. Why not? Sure, the fact of her death would be erased, but her memory of it would remain like a scar on her psyche. I won't let that happen, not if I can help it. But what can we do now? Even if we work together? I think there might be something that can be done. What is it? What can Sicily and I do? Don't forget, I'm here too. With three kinds of powers among us, we, might, we ought to be able to fight this battle. Battle against the fate of death. The Omiel. Sicily, your power is manipulating objects. Use your power to manipulate this. Huh? I don't get it. Just trust me, let's go. All right, um, I'll try to move there. What are we doing? Now gather your strength and make it spray as if your life depended on it. Uh, I'm dead, though. In that case, make it spray as if your death depended on it. Give it your all! And remember, you'll only have a split second. You know, do it! Got it. Spew! <laughs> Mother... Now it's your turn, missile. What? Uh, me? But what can I do? You know what you can do. Okay, got it. You can swap them. That hunk of concrete will go back to its original position. But even if I swap them, it'll still be right above Miss Lynn. Don't worry. Okay, I'll do it. I'll swap them. It's no use, we can't stop that horrible Mino! 
What can we do now? I don't see y'all gaining a second or two health. Oh, it helps, alright. Those few seconds were exactly what I wanted. Last up, it's my turn. Your turn. Get out of the way, Lin. You know what my power is, right? I can manipulate living creatures. Wait a minute, you mean... That's right. I'm going to save that little girl. Save her by manipulating my own unconscious body. Wow. Motherfuck. Uh. Ye gods. Oh, you're awake. Hey, mister, is your knee okay? Oh, oh, it'll be fine. It's just a scrape. Lucky it wasn't the fatal hit, but the main thing is that you're not hurt. You saved me, mister? I was just doing my job. The gods, they're the ones who saved you. What's your job, mister? Me and my police detective. Do you think you could go call the police for me? I think you could do it quicker than I could. But... What's that? This is a detective's badge, We're given to children who've been very brave. A detective's badge? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, you know what to do, little detective. Fucking hell, Yomio. And he was innocent the whole time! Except for when he took the hostage that was that was not very good, but like he was panicked. He had a gun pointed at him. He didn't know what to do. You alive? Yeah. Sadly. Hang on. Help is coming. What made you do such a reckless thing? To be perfectly honest, I don't really know. When I came to, my body was already moving by itself. It was as if somebody else was controlling me. He <laughs> does not know that the somebody else was himself. I see. But, you know... I'm glad it happened. On the key. Hey, mister. I found this kitten. It was over there. Come to think of it, I just saw it a few minutes ago. It's probably a stray. Kind of limp. Is it okay? I don't know. I think it's unconscious. That's funny. Doesn't look like it's injured or anything. Poor little kitty. How about if I take it to my house and look after it? Would you like to come home with me, little kitten? Save cat. Good best ending. Do not care about Hoonan. Do right by kitty. Well... Looks like his fate just changed in a big way. Whose fate? That kitten's, of course. Sissel's. What? The kitty is Sissel? What? I've been a cat the whole time? What? The name Sissel echoes in my head. That's my real name. This is the best video game ever made! Those long, lonely ten years. You were my one and only friend. How about it? Do you remember now? Old friend. He even has a little red scarf! The little red scarf like freaking like you are the felon! What the fuck? This is the best thing ever. This is the best experience of my life. I think I think I finally remember. 
ten years ago, I was a little kitten that wandered into this park. I was weak and all alone in the world. Is this why he wants to knock things off of stuff? Why he can't read? Why he doesn't eat potato? He was capped the whole time! Somebody please look at me! <laughs> I'm just a lonely kitty! Go away, kitty! Techmate says, this is why when Lin said the place I feel most at home is between the bed and the wall, he was like, yes, absolutely, I agree. Incredible. That's why he roughs up rats all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking unreal. Somebody please reach a hand out to me. Oh boy, Daisy's gonna get a big hug after this stream. I had only just died at the time. I had lost everything, my life, my memory. My body wouldn't move anymore, but I still managed to reach out a hand to him. Next thing I knew, my soul had transferred to the black kitten. With no recollection of who I was, I lived as a cat with you for a while. After a while, the man regained his memory. I went back to being just a cat. And then the man got his body back. Yeah, that would explain why Sissel had, like, very little knowledge of, like, technical human life things in general, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I took my body back from the morgue. There was somebody I just had to go see. Just one more time. Only friend, the kitty. I took control of my body and hurried to her house. I was just a little too late. I had just missed her as she left this world. She left me a note that said, I'm coming to you, yo -Yo. Uh, Okay, hang on a sec here. <clears throat> A man named me Sissel. It was a name of something important that he had lost, along with his life. His fiance. He told me about it once, but I didn't understand what it was. Best friend Kitty. Those ten years were, were very happy for me. But they weren't happy for the man. And there was nothing I could do for him. For ten years, I wandered through the darkness with no particular place to go. As time passed, my powers gradually changed. At first, I could only manipulate small creatures and objects. Then, after a while, I could manipulate people. That's when the darkness inside me deepened and I started to get a little twisted. I wanted light. Distorted artificial light. Oh no. Yeah, oh no, I just figured out what happened. When I got my revenge on Lin, I would see that light, or at least that's what I tried to believe. No. But wait, no, that's not right. I thought I was making a connection there, but hold on, it doesn't quite add up. I left my old self buried in that junkyard and walked away. Yeah, no, Kitty's lying. The black cat. 
I was possessing Sissel then. Wouldn't look very much like a murder if the corpse got up and walked away, after all. So you borrowed the body of your own fr of your old friend. Sissel was inside that bag I was carrying tonight. I had no intention of leaving my friend behind in this country when I left. But then, when I went to possess his body, I realized something horrible. Yeah. That first shot, Sissel there inside the bag was dead. What? <laughs> and his path for revenge took away his only friend! I wasn't able to control her completely. First shot hit the bag. The first bullet didn't hit anything, or so I thought. But it did hit something, didn't it? It hit Sissel inside that bag. Yes, that's when I lost my life. Right there in the presence of Temsic radiation. And that's when I got my powers of the dead, my ghost tricks. I think I understand it now. The kitty has a little red scarf. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get over this. I was the cat the whole time. Why, I was the only one who couldn't get his memory back. It was because I thought that corpse was me. It was the only corpse I could see at the time, after all. But as it turns out, it wasn't the only dead body. The poor Peter. My true death was hiding just behind that corpse. Now that I think about it, do you remember what you said? You knew all along about me saving Lynn tonight? If you knew, why didn't you try to stop me? It's simple. Because I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Huh? Why not? Remember the thing about individual differences in the powers we get? I can control all kinds of things, from the living to the dead. And even so, there are some things you can do that I can't. You mean... I can't even rewind time, let alone change the fate of a death. If I could do those things, I would have saved your life. God damn it. Not only that, but I never would have to let my fiance stay dead like that. But you're here ten years in the past now. That's thanks to your powers. I just tagged along with you. In any case, now the starting point of this entire tragedy has changed dramatically, altering fate. Fate of your death, the kitten Sissel's fate. And that can just bet the fate of the woman you love has changed too. Yes, I believe you're right. So, this was the last fate to be averted, huh? So, Yomiel, looks like your plan for revenge ended in failure. Yes, and I'm glad, too. I think I kind of understand now, what you've been feeling these ten years. <laughs> the fucking junk, Yomiel. I kind of love that design so much. She understood. She shed tears for me. That's when my revenge was over. She saved me from the darkness. I could tell too right then he felt for the first time understood. Well, I guess it's time we got back. A new ten years later was just born. Right, we should get back to our new present. I can't wait to see Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla again. So these past ten years all will now all vanish. Ollie tallied up some math. Lin, Yomiel, Cabanella, Jout, Pigeon Man, the guy in the park, Missile, the guy in the truck, and Cardiac Arrest Man, we saved nine lives. <laughs> well, not completely. The memories of all of us here will remain. 
Including the memory of what I did. My crime. That's the way this game of the dead works, eh? No matter what the reason. There's no denying the fact that I took Lynn hostage and tried to point a gun at her. I have no intention of running away from that either. The most inexcusable crime in my new life. Hey, Sissel. Yeah? When we go back, our fates will no longer be interconnected. It will be like we never met. So before that happens, I just wanted to say one thing. Tonight I stole away your life with my own hands. I'm truly sorry. That's already a thing of the lost past. Our fates have changed now, right, Yomiel? Thank you, Sizzle. I'm so very glad I met you. Me too, Yomiel. Sizzle? Are we ever going to see each other again? I couldn't stand it if we weren't. Don't worry, Missile. I bet we'll see each other again someday. Ten years from now, our paths are sure to cross. We'll just have to wait until then. Sissel, I'll... I'll never forget you! I'll never forget you either, valiant little doggy. Well, looks like you've come to live with me now. So let's be getting home, little black cat. Home, huh? That sounds good, Detective Judd. We all witnessed the birth of a new beginning, and now we're each going back to our own new present. I mean, all this will mean that Sissel is also alive now, right? Because, I mean, the timeline where he even did the things that Lynn is now gonna be erased, right? Ugh, excuse me here. Look, when you start bringing, like, cat lives and, you know, cat... You, you know what I'm trying to say. It, it gets me right in the feels. Mm. I'm okay. We're good. We said goodbye to the parts of our stories that would be lost. Believing that someday our paths would all cross again. <laughs> I witness. Me too, man. Me too. Before you go back to a new present, I wanted to thank you. Wait a minute, yep, I... I just was thinking you were probably about to show up. But whomst? Before I cease to exist... Oh, it's you. Yes, it is I, Ray, in case you've forgotten again. Thanks to you, everything has turned out as I had hoped. I really am grateful to you, Sissel. Thank you. Don't forget. I was only on a journey to find my own lost memory. Yes, yes, I know that. I know all about you. Can I ask you a question, Ray? I want to know. Who exactly are you? Fair enough. I will tell you. Let me tell you about another version of tonight's events. Huh? You changed the fates of many people tonight. First of which was hers. Fucked. The first of a couple of totally casual murders that may have happened here. Don't, don't worry about it. He was a criminal. If you had not been there for her tonight, her fate would have been to die in that lonely spot on the outskirts of town. If that had occurred, what do you suppose would have happened? Let me tell you a story. Story of a little creature. No. After they stole her life that night, they broke into her apartment. This guy. <laughs> Not missile. I mean, we already saw that happen, but still, damn! He, he was just a friendly little dog. He didn't have to shoot the dog. They stole the wooden box from the ceiling hiding place and left. And in the process... Two little dead bodies were left behind. However... 
the little fellow's spirit lived on. He desperately reached out his paw towards his mistress, and that's when a miracle occurred. What? Look at that, the powers of the dead, but how? He didn't really understand it himself, not yet anyway. But with all you know now, I bet you understand it, do you not? Hey, wait a minute. Sure, what the f it, It's also dog? Dog was twice? It was two dog? He died inside the aura of that strange energy. But unfortunately, with his meager powers, he was unable to save his little mistress. There just wasn't anything he could do with only the power to swap objects. He needed the power to manipulate objects in order to save the little lady. The little fellow chased after the men, but there still wasn't anything he could do. In the end, he was left behind with the man in red in the deep, deep sea. Wait, what? And then... He went back. He went back to the world of ten years before, to the moment of the man in red's death. What? He decided to wait it up. He decided to wait until that night came again. So, yeah, it also dog. Lamp was dog two. Or uh, I guess timeline wise, he, he was dog one because he went back and then we, uh, our dog is dog two. Two dog. Two dog and cat best video game. That's the other version of the story this night. A story that has taken these 10 years to be retold. This is what a dog sounds like when he's ten, a 10 year old ghost, I guess. So that was you, huh? It was me. Oh, missile. <laughs> this freaking video game. <laughs> Doc. That's right. I missile. Ten years is a very long time in dog years. You couldn't change the fates of those people on your own. So you decided to wait those ten years out. Oh, it's like that Futurama episode. Fuck! Ugh. Exactly, and then at last, that fateful night rolled around again. Truly the best boy. By this time, I had grown old and my powers were weak. So I decided I needed to find somebody to help me this time around. <laughs> somebody who possessed different powers than me. But wait a second. You were able to manipulate that desk lamp. Over the course of the long years, my powers changed. My ability to swap objects weakened, but I became able to manipulate small objects. But in that case, why didn't you cooperate with yourself? Because I couldn't. Huh? From watching the man in red, I found out there were individual differences in our powers. I couldn't do any of the things he could do. Like travel through the telephone lines, for example. Ah, what? It may not seem like much, but it's a very important power. Especially if you're trying to chase somebody. But there's something I don't understand. You knew from the very beginning, you knew from the very beginning that I had that power. How did you know so much about me? Why wouldn't I? After all, we had met before on that night the first time around. We, what? We met before? Huh? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still looking at the, like, tumbling friggin' the uh, Toby Fox dogs over there in chat. <laughs> I'm sorry to say if you're watching this on YouTube later, you're missing out on some pretty good chat on this episode. From listening to the conversation of the two intruders in the apartment, I learned that Miss Lynn had lost her life at that junkyard on the edge of town. I followed the ghost world past to the junkyard and came upon an incredible scene. And there he is again. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, there in the darkness, a twisting and swiveling desk lamp. 
I made my fur stand on end, I tell you. That was me? So I was shot on that night the first time around as well. You had lost your memory that time, too. You had just died and you felt confused. You declined to cooperate with me. I did what? I just want to find my own lost memory. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. That's what you said. <laughs> Bye. Cat phone now. And then you disappeared. Away over the telephone line. Eesh, sorry about that. I'm really sorry I didn't help you. That's why I decided that this time, I would use that desire of yours to our mutual advantage. Mutual advantage? The only thing you were interested in was finding your own lost memory. I could guide you along the right path to doing that, we would both benefit. And namely, the right path would be the path to the man in red, to Yomio. What? I gave you the information you needed to know to set you in the right direction. And then I gave you a time limit. Time limit? Wait a minute. That's right. As you know, I said you only had until tomorrow morning. If I hadn't done that, you wouldn't have found out the truth tonight. And the man in red would have been sealed away at the bottom of the sea forever. If that had happened, it would have all been over. Then you mean... That thing about ceasing to exist? Oh, that completely made up. Little naughty of me, I know. I, I just wanted to make sure you use your time wisely. Oh boy. I hate to admit it, but this little doggy really outsmarted me in every way. <laughs> Let's just call it the wisdom that comes with age. This game is truly outrageous. <laughs> I love it so much. I want to hug this video game. Only a few games evoke that response from me. Now it's time to say farewell. These past ten years will cease to exist, and with them, so will I. Missile. I believed in you. I always knew you could do it. And so you did. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Missile. So you waited and waited these ten long years. All for the sake of your two ladies, Lynn and Camilla, eh? Of course. Because that's what doggies do. Now then, farewell, Sissel. <laughs> and so, the story of a single night came to an end. Nobody but us knew what had really happened in this town tonight. I made my way back. Back to a new present. I love how Sissel and I both had that Eureka moment, like, in unison. Like, the game's narrative and my mind clicked at the exact same moment. Holy shit, I'm the cat! <laughs> huh? How come it's dark? I'll just turn on the lights here. Yikes, sorry about your chair, Gant. <laughs> no turns the aroundsies. There we go. Phew. Wait a minute, Lynn though? Why is it Lynn? Yeah, were you surprised? You bet I was, you nearly scared me to death. Yippee, it worked. It's not even my birthday today. It was my mom's birthday the day before yesterday. I made the surprise for her, but it came out so well I wanted to use it again. <laughs> there's, there's me, there's Sissel. That's all right, Lynn. After all, we're celebrating the birth of your new position as a detective, right? Really? Thank you, Detective Judd. Dad, you're home! Hi, Camilla. Let me introduce you. This is Lynn. She was just assigned to the detective division today. Hi, Camilla. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Lynn. Congratulations on becoming a detective. Huh? Something wrong? You have one of those badges too? Oh, this? Oh, yeah. I have one just like it. My dad gave it to me the other day. 
Yours looks a lot older than mine, though. <laughs> How long are you going to keep wearing that toy badge, Lin? What's wrong with it? To me, this is the symbol of a real detective. It's been ten years since then, hasn't it? Who would have guessed you'd actually become a detective one day? When you gave me this badge, I just knew. I knew it was my destiny somehow. Destiny, eh? Now that I'm a detective, I'll find out where that destiny will lead me. Haha, <laughs> that you will, that you will. Now, yes, good cat game. Best ending. It's me, the cat. I'm the sizzle, it's me. Oh, hello, don't tell me you're that same little kitten. That's right, the very one. You know what, this is a very, very special cat. He's 10 years old, but he's still a kitten. Same with Daisy, yeah. She's like 13-ish. No, she's still bad. Still a kitten. Oh, no, they mean it a little more literally. Yep, he never got any bigger or anything. Wow, what a mysterious little fellow. I know, right? His name is Sis. Sis. I mean, seriously, the little red scarf even, like, what? Come on. Hmm, seems to me I've heard that name somewhere before. Meow. I think Sissa likes you, Lin. Yay, Mom Herbs is alive. Alright, everyone, let's start the celebration. Okay, Mom. <laughs> Mom Herbs. <laughs> yes, good. This is a good way to pick up the kitty. I bet you're just like me. Your destiny led you here somehow, too. And so we meet again, Sissel. Just from that single night as a human, I got a glimpse into their world. And I learned something. Their fates, their lives, they were all interconnected. Somewhere, somehow, in some way. And now, this is my new fate. Cat mischief. I guess I really am a cat. Suits me just fine to curl up and watch. Watch the strange and beautiful patterns of their lives as they unfold. It looks like I'll have plenty to watch here for quite a while. <laughs> 11 out of 10 game. God, what a good video game. There you go. Oh yeah, look at him go. Boom. <laughs> Happy birthday to our lovely Lim! Uh, like I said, it isn't my birthday. Doc! I'm the doc! It is me, Missile, I'm the doc! Hey, Missile, I thought I was gonna stay home and guard the fort. Birthdays are for celebrating together with friends and loved ones. Let them love leg, baby droop. Wow! Even the way this guy eats spaghetti is incredible! Man, I thought Chow would have good form. Seriously. <laughs> oh. Hmm. You need more flowy stuff. You need a big scarf. You need a big coat. There, not bad. I like that, huh? Definitely not good. Maybe now I can be a great detective, just like Inspector Gabinella. What kind of example is the inspector providing for his men? Perhaps you should make your hair pointy, too. That would be a good look. Here's the footsman. And the clingy detective. Here's your food, gentlemen. Memory, what are you doing here? Heard you were going to be picking new members for the special investigation unit today. So you took out a part-time job here again, just so you could eavesdrop? Oh, you have no idea the lengths I'd go to to reach my goals. Dog says, cat twist into dog twist into cat twist is the best part of the story. I was not ready. 
I was not, like, not at all. I knew there was something about the cat. I could not have expected there was that much something about the cat. I've never cooked this way before. It's so exotic, so exciting. Turmeric, coriander, and cumin, and spices. Is this really necessary? This new curry chicken menu item. Oh, but our very best customer requested it. Now, good luck with the taste testing. I mean, I'd try it. Oh boy, I don't think I could eat another bite. So who exactly is this very best customer, anyway? It's Sausage Head! Best character in the game. Ugh. <laughs> the thing about a video game that tells a good story, this is probably not a good time to start on this. There's going to be more dialogue coming up. Remind me to come back to that point. Are you sure you really need all these explosives? Not to worry, beauty, my dear. I follow the instructions exactly. 20 kilograms of gunpowder, just like it said. Dead. Extra dead. Wait a minute, 20 kilograms? I thought it was 20 grams! Huh. <laughs> okay. Sausage Man had the best life ever. The end. So this is where you work out, Papa? That's right, sweetheart. Darling husband, don't you have any ideas at all you could give me? You must have heard some juicy stories, the indiscretions of a minister, perhaps? Now, now, must you talk that way in front of our darling angel? Here's to the stodgy mind of my darling husband. Clink! Right off his face. That is a weird place for that giant novelty safe, isn't it? Hmm. This deal's going quite well. Oh, I must say, these grapes are quite good, my man. You know it's about to scrape the bottom of the sea, sir, before what, sir? Good. Head fell off, sir. It's down here now, sir. Keep it together, man! Are you trying to give me a case of the vapors? I believe I nearly died of fright just now. <laughs> good work. Masa, Kazu, Sugimori, I mean everybody really, but... Damn. Love, peace, and pigeons, long live rock and roll! Good bird, too. He's a good bird. Bird concert. Yeah. Jam it. Stop the perk from charging admission. Protect the rights of those who live here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's just weird. Like, that was the best place in the game for there not to be a plot twist. Yeah, the dance! Today's the day, you know, he's finally getting out. You know, everybody's starting to get real tired of seeing you do that. Then let me show you a new dance that's been passed down in our family for generations. We do this when we have a stomachache. We call it Dance Away the Pain. Oh, I'm real interested in that one. Think you could show it to me, say, next week? You got it! Look at you! <laughs> Alright, it's a different scroll now. So in regards to the question, why can't Hollywood do this? I thought the same thing about Red Dead Redemption 2. Specifically what I thought about that was. When people talk about adapting that game to a movie, I realize you're talking about adapting like a 40-hour story. 
into a less than two hour one. Like, think about how long it takes to play a video game like this as compared to how long a movie runs, like 90 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, you would have to condense so much to tell anything that even resembles the same story. Like, video games really are a storytelling medium that isn't quite like any other one. Like, are, there are some things which I really do not feel would adapt well to film or whatever else. Like, if Ghost Trick for anything other than a video game, like... Would not have been anywhere near as fun. Tickman says, they managed to more or less pull it off with Harry Potter. Well, yeah, I mean the Lord of the Rings movies too, like, sure. It's doable, I'm just saying, like, it must be a real challenge. <laughs> Ten long years, Yomiel, your time's up today. The young lady who always comes to visit for it, you visit you, is waiting outside. Yeah, good on him for being able to walk, I guess. I really expected to see him in a wheelchair. Cecil. <laughs> Vroom. Yeah, there he is, Keiji Unifune. Yeah, that's kind of why I, yeah, sit right there with you, Kans. It's like why I don't want them to adapt Disco Elysium to a show, really. There he is, best friend. <laughs> Doink. Really, the right there, yeah, Ollie said it well too. Like, perfect score, no complaints about this game. It's just the best. This is one of my favorite streams I've ever done. Even for the sheer amount of reading that I've had to do, like, even <laughs> as much as all the different voices kill my throat and all that, like, God, am I glad I finally played this game. And I'm glad that uh, I was able to bring others along for the ride, too. This was just wonderful. Entirely. I don't have anything else to say about it. It's... What a good game. Whew. Well, alright then. I'll leave you with that. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna wrap the stream up now early. I can't imagine filling in anything else, uh... All right, well, hang on. Techman says to fill in some more stream time. The Ghost Trick trailer on YouTube is nice. All right, sure, I'll bite. Hang on. Just gotta change up some things here. I really can't think of any puzzles that I thought were that stinky either, if I'm honest. There are a couple things that stumped me here and there, but I don't remember ever really getting frustrated with the game. Maybe for just like a second. Right when it first dropped, Missile is also a ghost on us and we had to be the two ghosts. I was starting to get a little bit flustered with all the, everything going on there, but again, like, not in a way that damaged the game for me. Hang on, I just, it's like an 11 step process to change my capture over to a YouTube thing. Like, I mind like your stream labs, but there are some things you could probably handle better. Ryan, a pizza, where is it? 